NBC is the first network news team since the pandemic to be allowed inside this emergency zone. We are going to see the devastation caused by illegal mining. Where the rainforest now looks like this, desert interrupted by toxic ponds of mercury. What happens in the Amazon doesn't just stay in the Amazon. And that is why two of the world's foremost Amazon scientists, Luis Fernandez and Miles Silman, have agreed to be our guides. I'm studying tropical forest ecosystems and how they respond to climate change. And Luis? I don't study the same kind of pretty places that Miles does. I study areas that have been destroyed. Yeah, your sunshine, your darkness, essentially. <laughs> Essentially. The destruction is a result of a gold rush, which is now affecting worldwide weather patterns, crop growth, and carbon emissions. How bad is it? It's much worse than we had feared. Because to collect an ounce of gold, you must separate it from nearly 30 tons of silt. Miners working under very difficult conditions using really primitive techniques have to somehow sift through tons of sediment to get those little flecks of gold. The rich black silt is pumped out of a pit where the trees have been chopped down, and it's flush with water down a slide. But where's the gold? To get that final step, where you want to separate the gold from the sand, you add mercury. Mercury is poison, isn't it? It is. It's poisonous to humans, to wildlife. It lasts for centuries. All the mercury that is spreading. Some of it touches the gold, but a lot of it doesn't. The rest of it is thrown back into the river, kind of like the baby with the bathwater, except that the baby is toxic. And now studies show so are some of the fish, loaded with more mercury than anywhere else in the Amazon. And the people, more than 75% of those here have been contaminated with dangerously high levels. In total, they say, millions of acres have been affected across the region turning a place once vital for absorbing the world's carbon into one pumping carbon into the atmosphere. The first meter of soil in the forest holds as much carbon as all the trees that are above it. And then when we think about the next meter, two meters, three meters, four meters, there can be a whole other forest's worth of carbon down that deep. Are you suggesting that if we dig down there, we may be releasing all of this old carbon into the atmosphere? Not suggesting. We really are. It's something that needs a lot more study. It's something that we're, we're, we're just starting to, to work out. Is it too late to save this place? Luis and Miles say emphatically no. They take us on a tour to show us some ideas for the future. We visit a bold experiment in the works. The Harak Boot people, a 300-person indigenous community, has spent a million dollars developing an eco-lodge, not yet open. The setting, breathtaking. It's mind-blowing, the diversity that you find. If we walked out in the forest, there would be as many breeding birds in the, say, square mile as there are in all of North America. There would be a 1,000 species of butterflies, maybe more. But even here, we're shocked to discover they are mining with mercury to fund the eco-lodge in the hopes mining will one day be unnecessary. As for the professors, their work is deemed critical by the Peruvian government, which partners with them. This is the first and only mercury research lab in the Peruvian Amazon. They created a nonprofit, Cincia, which the U.S. and NASA also helped fund. Yeah, it's a big pile of rocks left over by gold mining. We're making our way to part of the largest reforestation operation in the Americas. How great! Where they study what might now grow in these mining pits. You have to have the right tree for the right place, right? Yeah, you can spend a whole lot of effort and just send the little trees to their death sentences. You're standing in a mining site. This was all mining. And finally, Luis introduces us to a group of kids they're working with. We're here with students to measure mercury to see if these rivers and streams are polluted by illegal gold mining. The insects the students collect will be studied by Cynthia scientists. It's really important to get the kids involved because these kids are the ones that are going to have to deal with this problem in the future. One day, what do you want to look back and say, yeah, we did that? I'd love to see a generation of Peruvian scientists solving their problems to pass the torch forward. We are on a team, and we, we tried. We tried to do something. I think, I think we did it, we're doing it, and that's something to remember. 
Now, don't think Peru invented the use of mercury for gold mining. Over 100 countries still use it. In fact, during the gold rush in the western U.S., prospectors used mercury, which is still contaminating some of the area's wow. fish. To this day. To wow. this day. Wow. That, was a, that was incredible, Such that a piece. Uh, just seeing those images of just that land totally barren that was once so lush. Yes. 370,000 acres and then a couple other million acres affected. I mean, it's, it's devastating. And, and, and as we said, I mean, it affects everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and imagine this place going from being a carbon absorber to a carbon releaser. Emitter, yeah. And wow. I love those scientists just saying, yeah. let's plant some trees. Let's, <laughs> let's, try to, yeah. let's try to turn this around to the extent we can. Yeah. Look at yeah. you again, shining Thank a you. spotlight just where it needed. Thank oh, you, thanks. Cynthia. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.